Welcome to Raw. I'm your host, Lena, and I'm here with the Screaming Rebel Angels. Hi! Hello! And we just heard, ooh, baby, you say it so much nicer than me. Ooh, my soul! There you go. Ooh, my soul. <laughs> and obviously, Rockabilly Sounds. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I have to ask, because this is not a common instrument. Yeah. I mean, the drummer usually has the worst thing to lug around. That's true. Yeah. That's Your, true. This is pretty big. But what made you get into saying, I want to play a, a cello bass? Oh, my God. It's such a pain in the butt. So it, it just kind of happened out of necessity. Because when we started, we were a four-piece band, and I was playing guitar. And then, like, in New York City, there's hardly anybody that plays upright bass because it's really hard to store and lug around, apparently. Yeah, so. right? So we would have all these rehearsals, and then I just I bought one, and then I just started playing with it, and then all of a sudden I was like, wait, I know how to play upright bass now. So, <laughs> so then I just we became a trio, and I play upright now. So, it's basically out of necessity because it's such a pain, and it's like a giant human to lug it, around. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's you know? me. And basically. you do it well, so <laughs> that's you. good. Thank that's you. good, right? I usually just beating the crap out of it because <laughs> I'm angry. I had to lug it around. So, I'm sorry I didn't even say your names. Laura. I'm Laura. Laura Palmer. I'm Brian. Jim Chandler. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, how did the three of you come together to be the Screaming Rebels? It was a dark and stormy night. It was, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, so, the band was started in 2011. So, um, been around for a while. Me and Brian have kind of been the core members of it. Um, and floating around, and then um, we've always had, we have this thing where all of our drummers don't get any ideas. All, past four of our drummers, their wives have gotten pregnant, and then they've moved out of the city, and then, I know, it's weird, so. Is this like a curse for you, or are you waiting? Uh, I, I think know. this is the first You're time we're telling him about this, so this has been like <laughs> yeah. our band curse. So then they all have beautiful children, and they My leave. palms are getting sweaty. <laughs> So Jim just recently joined us, and he's amazing, and thank you for being part of us. Thank you. Yeah. So how did the name come about? Oh, Screaming Rebel Angels. Um, when I was like 14 or 15, I started a fanzine, and it was called Rebel Angel Fanzine. And I just used to write about like punk rock and like rock and roll and hardcore bands. And so everybody suddenly just started calling me Laura Rebel Angel. So when I started the band, I was like, oh, it should be Rebel Angel. And then there was already another band. So then we put Screamin' in, like Screamin' Jay Hawkins. And oh, then, nice. of course, spelled it without the G and with the apostrophe. So it's completely impossible for anybody to spell right or to find us online. We're Screamin' without the G. <laughs> to everybody. I don't know where I'm supposed to look. We're Screamin' but <laughs> the G is silent. The G is silent. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> screaming, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good story. This is why I shouldn't be talking. <laughs> so, who's okay? So we're gonna listen to some more sounds. We have some more songs to play. Then we're gonna come back and talk more. Okay. Okay. You're gonna love this music. Better you to my head and go Cause I don't wanna let the paper fall 
I'm back here with the Screaming Rebel Angels, Laura. Hi. <laughs> Brian and Jim. Jungle Jim. Jim. Jungle Jim. Screaming <laughs> Rebel Angels. We're gonna. Everyone's gonna get it at the end if we keep saying it. Okay. Right. One day I'll remember it too. And they'll find you anywhere. Even if we have to start screaming it. Yeah. <laughs> All these so puns. I have in my hands, by the way, oh. this great little card, mm -hmm. because you're nominated for 2020 Rockabilly Female of the Year. I am, with the Ameripolitan Awards, and the Ameripolitans are a really cool genre that was started by Dale Watson, I think in 2011, and he is a great honky-tonk and country singer that's been around since the 80s and 90s, who's a contemporary of, like, We Chris don't care about him. Chris Isaac. You're rockabilly. Well. You're going to be Laura so Palmer. So he's the one that started <laughs> this. So he started it because we didn't have, like, for, you know, rockabilly and, like, rock and roll, the kind of music that we play, it's so just, it's such an American music, you know, and there's nobody that really recognizes it, like, for an award show. So that's why this was kind of created. So I'm very honored to be nominated as one of the Rockabilly Female of the Year, 2020. And then what's really awkward now is that you have to vote for it. So, <laughs> so this is so we're going to get everybody like, to look up yeah. Screaming Rebel Angels. Yes. So, so that they can, can go, go to vote. Ameripolitan.com or go to any of our socials, and I'm sure it's all there. And voting ends on New Year's Eve. Well, so you can vote Laura Palmer don't for... Forget. Rockabilly Female of the Year now we, for we, the Ameripolitans. We just <coughs> heard two more songs yes. with the Rockabilly sounds, of course. So you sing, you play, mm -hmm. you jump around with this giant thing, have a lot of fun doing it, uh -huh. and you write. Yes, yeah. So now you wrote one of the songs we just heard, and you wrote one of the songs we just mm -hmm. heard. Okay, yeah. let's talk about that. Because first it's the sound. Mm -hmm. I, w we have to get into some of the influences that bring that out. Okay, and then it's also the mood when you're creating it. So, yeah, let me have it. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. It just, I, I try to sound more traditional rockabilly, but this is just the way everything comes out of me. It's just like, ah! <laughs> That's just my personality. And That's because you live in New York. I guess, right? yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, um, when I'm with you, that was... Um, uh, you know, I just wanted to write just like a really fun, moving song that everybody can kind of dance along to. And it's just a, for me, it's just like a kind of a fun one that I was like, I want to write a song where people can dance. Um, and you, when I was listening to the songs, I was uh, thinking about Back to the Future because it was all like... <laughs> <laughs> Marty McFly? Yeah, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yes. You were going on that guitar. Yeah. Chuck Berry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you keep playing guitar Berry. in that, but you're right, yeah. That's so like my go-to. Is he, like is he one of guitar? your influences that I keep men mentioning this? Michael J. Fox? <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah. 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 And so... Not as many as, not as much as some other people, but, but yeah. Like, who, like well, who are the other people? Well, uh, like Cliff Gallup. He was uh, the guitarist for Gene Vincent. Uh, Grady Martin, who played on all the Johnny Burnett records. Luther Perkins played for Johnny Cash. Like, a lot of different influences. 50s R&B and rockabilly and honky-tonk and hillbilly. It's a, it's a wide range. So you grew up with that? That's embedded in you? Yeah, These great I grew sounds. up with old hillbilly records and that's what we had around the house. Yeah, because when you think about it, like really, mm -hmm. going back to when rock and roll first came out, it really was like a, more of a rockabilly than you know, Led Zeppelin rock or something like that. Yeah. Like a yeah, when you when or you really Metallica, that wasn't around. It was it was more of a softer rock, right? Well, I, I think you know a lot of people they put to like the start of kind of rock and roll at Rockabilly at Sun Records, and they put it to Elvis Presley and um, kind of the first recordings there. But I think it goes back to like what is Rockabilly, and it's kind of this early American music that combines uh, rhythm and blues and um, Appalachian gospel and the hillbilly stuff. And there's um, all of these great and amazing artists that um, they just don't get enough recognition. So when you think of rock and roll, you're thinking of like those other artists, but it's really, uh, what are the Chuck things? Chuck Berry. Yeah, you think of Chuck <laughs> Berry, you think of that, but there's even more of them. There's um, a great just history of like Appalachian uh, gospel preachers like uh, Brother Claude Eli, 
or um, just amazing African-American women like Sister Rosetta Tharp, who was doing all the Chuck Berry stuff in the 40s, you know, and she just had like her, and it's, um, one of the other things that I do is I do a lot of um, um, kind of co-host and talk with DJs and I talk about like a lot of the history of rock and roll in this and so I'm trying to kind of really bring a little bit more light to these artists that and wow. get them to like, kind of pay their so I mean they have so much influence on what we do so I just hope everybody else can like look them up and just kind of love the music like every time I discover like new old music I get so excited now we're gonna hear some more songs that you did and you mentioned Elvis Presley because mm -hmm. now you kind of switch it up I think in the next group of songs yeah where it's slightly different sound. So we're gonna check this out, come back and talk more about that. More from the Screaming Rebel Angels. Got it. Yay. <laughs> Thinking, bring happiness. Oh, well, let me. 
back again with Screaming Rebel Angels. Now, Laura, I just, we mentioned Elvis Presley going into that mm -hmm. next group of songs. Because you do have one song that the minute you started singing, I was like, oh, Elvis. That's what it reminded me of. Uh. Brought me back to like that suave voice he would mm. start with. Yeah. And from listening to the other songs where you're like, hey, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is different. So the versatility is really a wide range, right? Yeah, we, we try. I mean, we play some of these sets that are like hours and hours long. So it's nice to be able to kind of open up what we do and just kind of explore a little bit. And so kind of that more bluesy one that we were doing um, it's one of, my, one of my favorites. It's called Something on Your Mind. Um, and you wrote that? No. Well? Oh, we wrote that. I song. did not. Uh, Big J McNeely wrote that. So that was a uh, rhythm and blues song, but there was actually a version of it that B.B. King and Etta James do together that we kind of took a little bit of the influence from that and put our own spin on it, too. And then, yeah. And then you're talking about Elvis. Um, actually, the Ameripolitans are going to be at the guest house at Graceland. I know. Really? I've never been to Graceland before. I'm like such an Elvis fan. Is this where you get to collect the award? If I win, if everybody it? votes. Well, all these, pe all these fans are going to vote. Thank so. you guys. Vote at. Very, very good chance. Stuff. I hope so. Yeah, so what do you think? Graceland, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a guest mm -hmm. house at Graceland. It's going to be my first time that I'm, I'm there, too. So. Really? My mother out. and Elvis have the same couch. Because I've had family members <laughs> go to Graceland and they're like, do you Whoa. know your mother's couch is in Graceland? Was that an accident? Uh, <laughs> I thought the story was going to go totally My mother, different. It's still perfect. <laughs> you know, it was covered it. in plastic for 50 years, so. <laughs> now, you, you guys are all over the place because now I'm looking at this flyer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Besides being on, on the Internet with Instagram and Twitter yeah. and Facebook, and you're touring all over the place. We do. We, um, so we put out this record called Heel Grinder that had an amazing response to it in a ton of magazines, and we started getting booked on all of these kind of like bigger festivals. So we're going to be at, um, after the Ameripolitans, we'll be at Viva Las Vegas, which is the world's largest rockabilly festival. And we're playing like 1 a.m. on Saturday night, so we're super excited about that. That's nice. Um, we are playing Screamin' Festival, also spelled like how we spell it, and that's in Spain. So wow. we'll have a nice tour um, that starts in, um, I think we start in Prague, and then we make our way down to Barcelona, and very excited about that. Wow. Um, we're playing a Motoblot, which is a huge um, motorci vintage motorcycle festival in Chicago. Uh, we're playing the Nashville Boogie. We're playing uh, Viva East. We just have all these great tours and opportunities to just Well, like, in case they didn't around. have <laughs> the pen and paper ready or, you know, the phone to, like, mark all that down. Is everything listed on your site? Yes. Update it. <laughs> update it. It'll be totally updated. Yes. Go to ScreamingRebelAngels.com. There is no G in Screaming and no apostrophe in the Then Thank you, your music, your tour date. Yes, we have vinyl, we have CDs, we have tons of um, videos, photos, just, I don't know, hang out, say hi. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming down, spending time with us, sharing your music, because it was really great. I hope everyone enjoyed it out there, and we will see you next time. Don't forget to look up Screaming Rebel Angels. Good luck on your tour, too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. Oh. We had such a blast. That was Great. wonderful. Bye, Thanks. everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I got a move on and a broken